In today's video, I will be showing you how to create a virtual machine in Google Cloud Platform. So let's get to it. Okay, so like I mentioned in today's video, I will be showing you how to create a virtual machine in Google Cloud Platform. So a virtual machine in GCP is also called a compute engine. You can also hear people call it a VM instance. All right, so I will be showing you how to create a VM instance, a compute engine, or a virtual machine in this video in Google Cloud Platform. Okay, so let's get to it. So to create a virtual machine in GCP, uh, all you have to do is go to your GCP account, just log in uh, to GCP console, and once you are in your console, there are two ways that you can create a VM instance or compute engine. So there's a button here for compute engine. So you can just directly click here or you can go to the search section and also search for compute engine. And this will show up. OK. And that should bring you to this page where you can create your VM instance. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. So there are two ways of doing this. You can hit this button down here or you can also create uh, here where it says create instance uh, on top uh, section right here so i'm going to hit this and uh, now this is our configuration page where we can enter all of the information that we need in order to create our vm instance so the first thing that we need to put here is the name for the instance i'm going to call this demo instance uh it has to be small case i don't think it allows uh uppercase it does not so your name should be only lowercase um uh, name okay so that is my name right there and the next thing that we need to do here is to select the region where we want our fm instance to be created i'm going to leave mine in iowa uh, but you can select which location you want uh, this to be created okay and i will leave the zone to be any so i will choose any of the zone and then the next year we choose machine configurations so this this section here we do have different configurations general purpose are for development purposes but as you navigate to these other ones uh, these are really um, high performance and more expensive uh, configurations so if you're running in a production environment or a development environment that requires higher compute power you might have to uh, check into some of these other options but if you're just going to be using this environment for low level development work then you might just want to go ahead and choose the general purpose and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with general purpose and I don't want anything that is expensive. So I will go with this low cost day to day computing, uh, the E21. So I'm going to select that. And as you can see here, this is the current estimate. So let's see if we can bring that cost down. So let's go down here to the machine type. And here you can choose um, the number of CPUs and memory that you need for this. I'm going to choose micro because this is just for demo purposes. And you can see if you let this one run continuously, the cost per month will will come down to $7. So this is pretty cheap. It's not exp expensive. But this again, if you let it run continuously, if you stop it, then the cost might come down even further. And uh, the availability policies, I will leave it as standard. And we have a warning here uh, saying terminate VM instance and um, I don't want this I don't want uh, this to be selected so choose what happens to your VM instance uh, when it's preempted or reaches its limit so I'm just going to say my credits um, instead of terminating it okay so let's go down and on the container section here, you can deploy a container into this instance upon creation. So you can put your 
uh, container configuration here and it will be applied when this instance is created I'm not going to do that and uh, right here put disk this is where you can choose which image type uh, you want your VM instances instance to be created on so we do have different different operating systems here we have CentOS we have Debian Debian is the one that uh, comes by default or is selected by default we have OpenSUSE uh, we have Enterprise Linux for SAP so if you're running SAP workloads uh, you can choose one of these uh, we also have Ubuntu and Windows Server so just choose which one you want to create for your case so I'm just going to leave it as Debian for default and for the service account uh, there's a default service account that comes um, or that is provided for you so just leave that one or if you have another service account that you want this compute engine to be created on you can select that but I'm going to leave it as default I'm going also to allow a scopes as default and uh, for firewall I'm not going to allow HTTP access at this time but we might modify this letter so I'm just going to leave that one unselected and uh, let's go to advanced options now uh, in advanced options we have networking so if you want to add uh, tags or a specific host name you can do so here you can also uh, choose to enable IP forwarding okay and you can choose a specific network interface if you have it right here okay so these are just some further configurations that you can do for your networking and as we scroll down um, so that is for networking you can you know choose all of you know whatever oh, oh, oh yeah there's one here for uh, the IP address so this is for uh, external IP address so remember here you will be provided with external actually you will see it when we create but when this one is created you will be provided with a, a external IP address and that's ephemeral so that means that when you close or when the VM instance is, is stopped and when you start it again the IP that you will get here will be different so if you want if you don't want this IP address to change then you can reserve a static external IP address so this is actually very important when uh, if you are connecting externally to your firm instance uh, using the external IP so uh, you can reserve this there might be some costs associated to this but it's just an option here for you to know that you can actually reserve your IP address all right so let's go down here so that's for networking and for disks you can add a local disk or additional disk if you want I'm not going to do that uh, security you can uh, modify or apply further security options here I'm going to leave the ones that are selected uh, on and uh, this management section here you can enable deletion protection okay so this is also another additional security feature here uh, if you click this then nobody will um, uh, delete your account so if it's going to say that yeah th this is protected instance so um, this is just additional protection measures that you can apply on your instance I'm going to leave this unchecked and you can add some scripts here and um, this one if you have some specific softwares that you need to be installed when the instance is uh, started you can put those scripts here and when the instance starts up those um, scripts will be applied automatically so this is also a very cool feature and uh, as I scroll down I don't think there's anything else here that I can do maybe for the encryption uh, we will leave it uh, to be uh, under Google managed encryption but if you have a specific uh, encryption key that you want to use then you can choose the second option there okay so that is it I'm then going to go ahead and hit create okay so this will take a few minutes to spin up this instance so we'll come back once this one is ready 
Okay, so our instance is now ready and we can now start connecting to it and um, playing with it. All right, so to connect to this VM instance and note here, this is the IP address that I mentioned. So this is currently ephemeral. So that means that if you close or if you stop this instance and the next time you bring it up, this IP address will be different. Okay, so to connect now, all you have to do is go here where it says SSH and uh, click this button here and you will see there are different options here to uh, open your SSH. You can open it in a new browser window or you can uh, open it in a browser window on custom port. Uh, you can also use Gcloud or uh, use another, another SSH tool. So I'm going to show you two options in this video. Uh, the first one is with the browser window and the, the second one will be to connect using Gcloud. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this in a new browser. And this will give you a browser-based uh, terminal that you can use to run. So this is going to authenticate with your account. And right here now we have our uh, browser terminal ready. So you can start now running your commands here. So for example, let's uh, make a directory demo. And then let's create a file inside this demo. Okay. And we can write some text to this file. Okay. Uh, let's redirect this into that file. And now if we check our file, there is some data in there. Okay. So now you can start, you know, using the, the, the fear machine, um, install your softwares and um, do your development you know you can do whatever you need to do now with this uh, instance okay so this is one way of interacting with the firm instance uh, using the browser based uh, terminal and the other option that i mentioned is through uh, Gcloud. so Gcloud is a, a google cloud a cli tool that you can use to interact with the uh, resources in google cloud platform so to use this you can actually copy this command into your local uh, environment and actually interact with the firm instance from your local machine uh, but to do this you do need to have gcloud uh, installed in your local environment and i have done a video previously where i went through the process of installing cloud cli uh, in mac os i also did another one in windows where I went through the process of installing Cloud SDK in Windows uh, environment. So if you don't have a uh, Gcloud installed and you want to do that, you can take a look into those videos and install Gcloud. And then once you have that ready, you can come and basically copy this command and go to your terminal or a, a command from the view using Windows and basically copy this command okay so just copy and paste it so i'm just going to paste it here and i will enter okay so again i do have gcloud installed for me so we should be able to uh, log in and uh, it looks like it it worked for me so i'm actually connected to my demo instance so you can see here so you can now check and uh, it creates uh, a user for you based on your user uh, your local environment user so you can see now that i'm logged in and i can actually start playing with this so i can for example say i want to make a directory inside this user we can do the same thing that we did with the other one uh, and we cd to this uh, and then maybe let's create a test file okay and then we can write some data into this test file. Okay. There we go. All right. You can also, if you go back to your 
uh, home directory so if you go to your home directory you can see the user that we ha we had um, in our browser version so this was the user that we we were using in the browser version so you can actually cd to this and see what files are available there so we we can see that that is the file that we created in browser and also that was uh the, the the file that we created with the data in it okay um and if you go back now to your browser and open that window maybe this yeah this was the one so you can see if you go to your home directory we should be able to have two users now so this is the user that we are interacting with locally and you can check what is inside that folder okay so again that is the file that we created locally all right so this is pretty neat so you you are able now to create your firm instance and also connect to it locally uh, as well as through the browser all right so that is what i just wanted to show you guys in this video i hope you found it useful and if you did please do give thumbs up and also add your comments uh if you like the video subscribe to the channel as well if you have not subscribed and do share it with your friends all right guys that's all i had for you today bye bye